Guys, it finally happened. Apple has just released new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and a new Mac Mini. We've been waiting for those for a good half a year now and they are finally here. And after reading a press release, I can say this update is strange. On one hand, I really like it and on the other hand, I'm disappointed. So let's look at everything new about 2023 MacBook Pros and a Mac Mini. The first thing you notice is the design, it's the same. The same aluminum body, glass screen and black keyboard underlay. Visually, you won't be able to tell apart new Macs and old Macs, but I have no problems with that. This is a minor spec bump, so any serious design changes would be costly. Plus, I quite like the design. It's very solid, sturdy and up for beating. I would say that this design is somewhat perfect for a laptop that's marketed as performance driven because this combo of flatness and roundness gives a very inspirational feeling. So. Apple did the right thing and changed nothing. The thickness is the same, the weight is roughly identical with the new 14 inch being 30 grams heavier with M2 Max chip and 16 inch being 10 grams heavier with M2 Max. There is only one thing I wish they changed the keyboard underlay. I wish it was metal like on M2 MacBook Air, this way it would have been much easier to see keys and navigate between them and it would be easier for new MacBook users who are not familiar with Apple's keyboards and can't do blind typing. That's what I think. Anyway, who cares? However, the design is not the only thing that was left unchanged. The screen also stayed exactly the same. Both laptops have exactly the same screen, same size, same bezels, same notch, same resolution and same brightness levels. Don't get me wrong, the screen in 2021 MacBook Pros are excellent, much better than on most laptops. They are super bright and crispy, colors are very vibrant and natural, the default color profile is perfect for coloring or photo Photo editing and the ProMotion makes using these screens exceptionally pleasant. So I think changing anything wasn't necessary, so Apple left everything as is. However, bear my word, as soon as iFixit disassembles these machines, you will see that the old screen doesn't work because the connector has changed. <laughs> Apple is notorious for that, so don't think that fixing the screen would be cheap. But yeah, the screens are identical in every way. The one thing that makes me sad is that notch. Does it have to be that big? After one and a half year of innovations, can't it be smaller at least a bit? I guess in two more years we'll see a smaller notch presented as innovation. Anyways, but that's the external side of things and all the differences are on the inside. New MacBooks are rocking the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips, which offer a clear advantage in performance over the previous M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. M2 Pro, just like the M1 Pro, has the better version with up to 12 CPU cores, which consists of eight performance and four efficiency cores and 19 GPU cores. Apple claims the new M2 Pro chip is up to 20% faster than the 10-core CPU in M1 Pro, which is a good improvement. Plus, M2 Pro with extra GPU cores should give up to 30% improvement in graphics performance according to Apple. Apple says that M2 Pro is 40% faster in image processing in Photoshop than M1 Pro and 25% faster in code compiling in Xcode. M2 Max, on the other hand, now has 12 CPU cores and 30 or 38 GPU cores. Older M1 Max had 10 CPU cores and 24 or 32 GPU cores. Apple claims that the M2 Max is up to 30% faster than M1 Max in graphics intensive tasks, so we see a healthy improvement across the board. Color grading in DaVinci is 30% faster than on M1 Max. New M2 Max chip also supports higher memory bandwidth up to 400 GBs per second. The M2 MacBook Pro sadly is still at 200 GBs per second, but that's fine for most people. This bandwidth increase should result in even better multitasking and faster performance since accessing the unified memory now happens at much higher speeds. Both chips use a second gen 5 nanometer process, which as we see has reached its limits. As for hardware encoding capabilities on both new chips, Apple hasn't forgotten about that. New chips have updated encoders and decoders that should make video editing 
even faster. M2 Max, unlike M2 Pro, features two video encode engines and two ProRes engines, bringing up to 2x faster video encoding than M2 Pro. It seems like the M2 Max is going to be a real beast in video editing. As for the neural engine, it has the same 16 cores but claimed to be up to 40% faster, but we still have to test it out. Plus, the secure enclave got updated, making the security even better, and image signal process in new chips now does an even better job of making videos look nice. Another hardware change is the improved unified memory. The minimal amount starts at 16 gigabytes just like before, but the maximum amount is now reaching 96 gigabytes, but only for the M2 Max. M2 Pro maximum size is 32 gigabytes. I think the experience will be even better than before, so we'll have to do some tests. So subscribe to the channel to not miss anything. Apple also made changes to the standards of ports. Two laptops are preserving the layout and the port selection, SD card slot, HDMI, headphone jack, MagSafe 3, and three Thunderbolt 4 ports. As for these Thunderbolt 4s, they are almost the same. There are improvements, however, to the display support. M2 Pro now supports up to two external displays with up to 6K resolution at 60 Hz. And M2 Max supports up to three displays at 6K 60 Hz. But that's still not everything. HDMI now supports multi-channel audio output, which is great for some people. Plus, it now supports up to one 8K screen at 60 Hz or 4K at 240 hertz. That's what previous Pro MacBooks needed. Another difference is Wi-Fi. The updated MacBooks have Wi-Fi 6E, which extends Wi-Fi to the 6 GHz band for more bandwidth, faster speeds, and lower latency. The current 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro support standard Wi-Fi 6, which is limited to 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. Bluetooth also got updated to 5.3 from 5.0, which will make connection to your AirPods or other devices is faster, more stable, and more power efficient. Apple also claims that the battery life is better. 18 hours of video playback for the 14-inch Pro model and 22 hours for the 16-inch model. I think that battery life on old Pros was already very good and even such small improvements as one to two extra hours are very, very welcome. However, the charging situation stayed the same. At least for the 14-inch laptop, Apple includes the same 67 watts power adapter in the box with base 10 core M2 Pro and more powerful models will get a 96 watt power adapter. With a 16 inch MacBook Pro, however, you have no choice and will get a 140 watt charger, which is awesome. Sadly, you still can't order a power adapter with two type C ports similar to the one on M2 MacBook Air. I think this addition would have been really helpful to many people. As for the price, new Macs cost exactly as they did before, so if you were thinking about upgrading, this may be the deal you were looking for. However, we will still conduct our tests and see what is a better deal. A refurbished previous gen or new last gen MacBook Pro, so stay tuned for updates. The official sales will start on 24th of January and we will make a review as soon as possible for you to enjoy. And now to the new Mac Mini. It again looks exactly the same, has all the same ports but slightly better, just like on MacBooks, and rocks two new chips, M2 and M2 Pro. M2 here is straight out of the MacBook Air. It has 8 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores. We all know what this thing is capable of. The unified memory size is also the same starting at 8 gigabytes and can go up to 24 gigabytes. Base storage is 256 gigs and I'm pretty sure it will have the same memory issues as the M2 MacBook Air. As for the M2 Pro Mac Mini, that's interesting. A small machine half the size of the Mac Studio with this new M2 Pro will surely be a great alternative to the aforementioned mentioned Mac Studio. Smaller, lighter, less clumsy, great stuff. Memory here goes up to 32 gigs and base 512 gig storage can be upgraded to 2 terabytes. The M2 model has two Thunderbolt 4 ports and can connect up to two displays, while the M2 Pro model has four Thunderbolt 4 ports and up to three displays connection, including one 8K display. Both models also have two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a gigabit Ethernet port with a 10 GB option and an upgraded headphone jack. They also also have Wi-Fi 6E for faster speeds and Bluetooth 5.3 for wireless connectivity. 
Whew. So, what are my thoughts on these new updates? I think that this update to MacBooks is very minor and that M2 Pro and M2 Max are solid chips, but their performance gains are not enough to justify the purchase and upgrade if you have an M1 Pro or M1 Max machine. There are simply not enough differences to choose the new one at a full price over the previous model, but refurbished. The update is nice to have, but I will share more of my thoughts after I actually get my hands on these MacBooks. Mac Mini with M2 Pro seems really promising and it would be fun to see a face-to-face -face comparison with Mac Studio.